Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Sound of the Mountain, a Japanese drama from 1954 that was directed by Mikio Naruse. Now adapted from a novel by Yasunari Kawabata, the first Japanese author to be awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, Sound of the Mountain typifies Naruse's preferred genre of shomengeki, or films about the daily lives of ordinary people. Now set in the ancient seaside town of Kamakura, Sound of the Mountain depicts the increasingly close relationship between a childless young woman, played by Setsuko Hara, and her father-in-law, played by So Yamamura, to whom she turns as her own marriage to the neglectful and philandering Shuichi disintegrates. Now, right from the start of this film, our protagonist is not treated nicely. Her husband is a major jerk. It's just that simple. But he's portrayed in a realistic way. You know, he's not like a mustache twirling lunatic who, you know, gets off on abusing her or anything like that. He's simply indifferent and does not care about her at all. It kind of makes you wonder why they got married to begin with. Uh, he prefers to insult her with underhanded comments throughout the film. He holds no value in marriage as a concept or their actual relationship and plans on divorcing her when it's convenient for him. But that's not all, because her in-laws constantly give her grief for not bearing a child, more specifically her mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Now, needless to say, this film has a strong conflict at its forefront that will likely provoke an emotional response from the viewer. Our protagonist does her best to work things out, but it's basically a no-win situation for her, and you know her daily life is pretty miserable. Her lone companion in all, in all of this is her father-in-law. Okay, He's a decent guy who attempts to talk some sense into his son, because he knows what's going on here. And you definitely gather the impression that he's not at all happy with his son's treatment of women. So much so, in fact, that there are sequences in this film that actually follow the father-in-law as he tracks down his son's mistress in an effort to diffuse the problem at its source. So I really like the chemistry and camaraderie between our protagonist and the father-in-law. They have like a very good heart-to-heart -heart conversation multiple times in this. And speaking of the dialogue overall, it's very well written. I like confrontational dialogue in movies a lot of times because it adds some intensity to things. And this movie showcases some difficult conversations. And the great thing is that no one ever really loses their temper to the point of, you know, screaming at someone or anything like that. So, you know, the presentation, I think, is very well balanced and it avoids getting too melodramatic. Now, this movie does hit upon some very touchy subject matter, some of which I will not spoil for you. Uh, one obvious theme is that uh, of marriage and family dysfunction, which are emphasized even further by the husband's sister, who's having major troubles with her own spouse. Her daughter, though, is one of the cutest little girls you'll ever see, so look out for her. She makes a few appearances. The acting here is top-notch. Setsuko Hara is one of my favorite Japanese actresses from the classic era. If you're interested in Japanese film, I highly recommend Tokyo Story and Early Summer for some additional showcases of her acting ability. She's, she's great. Now, before I wrap this up, I wanted to point something out that I found online. I read somewhere that Naruse was asked a question at one point. You know, out of all of the films that you've made, which one is your favorite? and he selected Sound of the Mountain as his personal favorite from his own filmography. So that definitely says something. I definitely recommend this flick, uh, which is available streaming on Filmstruck, which requires a subscription, of course. The DVD, I believe, was a UK release back in the day, about a decade ago. Very more, It's more difficult to find nowadays, and it's pretty expensive. I actually have it in my collection, unbelievably, which I showcased in my DVD collection video, so I'm glad I have it. But uh, if you want to watch it, you're probably going to have to find it streaming on a subscription site. So check it out if you can, though. It's a very good classic film, and it's, it's a good one to kind of wet your feet if you're not too familiar with Japanese classics, especially, you know, if you're not familiar with Narose. So as always, we will see you next time.